All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at logging in our user. Now, in the previous video, we went ahead and registered our user and saved them into our database. So, if you haven't seen that one yet, go ahead and back and go back and watch that first. Um, in both these videos, you're going to need the bcrypt package because we're going to be hashing these passwords. So, um, if you don't have it already, you're going to have to use the go get and then this right here to bring in that package. Um, Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the slash login path is going to be registered to the login handler. And as you can see here, our login handler is simply going to execute our template. We're going to use the login.html file, and we're not going to pass anything in. So if we take a look at our login.html file that we're, that we're going to be executing here, uh, it's basically just, just a login form. So uh, we have our username, we have our password, and our submit buttons. If we take a look at that in the browser, name, password, and submit. And so if we were to hit that submit button, click on that button, the action it's going to take is it's going to send us to the login auth, which is short for authenticate, um, path, and this is going to be a post method. So uh, we want to make sure we use a post and not a get, because if we use a get, you know, just for review, um, it's going to send that uh, that information through the URL, and we don't want to do that. We want it to be more secure. We want to make sure when you hit that submit button, we're going to send a request to the server, and we want to make sure that that password is inside the body of that request, which is going to be more secure. So, and down here. We just have a if, you know, if something exists, if that equates to true, we're going to display this. Now, remember, we're just displaying this form. We're passing in nil. And so when we pass in nil, it's going to equate to false. So, you know, you know we're not going to display anything. But we're going to use this to uh, pass information to the user if they're having trouble logging in. We're just going to send them back to the login page. So, hey, check the, uh, the username and password. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and show how this works. So uh, just using a very, I'm just going to use a very insecure password, capital P-A-S-S-W-R-D-1234 question mark, and we have successfully logged in. Now we're going to look at staying logged in using sessions and the next video, but let's go ahead and go back in. And of course, if I use the wrong password, I'm just put in the word, you know, something wrong, it's going to say check username and password. Let's go ahead and go back to our code. And so, like I said, uh, when we hit the submit button, it's going to send us to this path and it's going to use the method post, which is going to be more secure than get. So, let's go back to our code. So, again, this one just was displaying our form. We hit that um, submit button. It sends us to this path, which is going to run our login auth handler. And if we go down to there, we're going to go ahead and grab our variables. We're going to parse our form. We're going to grab our form values. We're going to grab our username. We're going to grab our password. And we need our hash variable because remember, we're going to be saving the uh, password is hashes. Uh, just in review, looking at our table here, um, I mean, we could have saved these as passwords. It'd be a little bit simpler. We could just compare that password to a password. But if someone was to steal this table, uh, it wouldn't just be a security risk for this uh, site. It would put our users at risk on probably many of their other sites. Most people use their the same password for multiple sites, so. Um, the criminals would use that and, you know, probably go on a shopping spree on one of the other sites. Um, anyway, and you could also use, you wouldn't want to use in, encryption. Um, a hash is a one-way function. Encryption's made to go back and forth so they get a hold of your source because they can easily kind of bring those, that encrypted data back to a password. Where with a hash, it's a one-way function, so it's a little more difficult, say, if this table gets stolen, they still have to figure out what the input is, you know, try it, 
and then find out what the output, you know, and see if that output matches this. So they'd have to still try many, many, many different options. Um, you know, if we don't, with the password, we don't need to know that information. Like, um, so something you encrypt would be like, you know, maybe like a email or a telephone number because you need, at some point, you're going to need to be able to turn those back to either send them an email or a, a, a text message or something. But if you don't need to know that information, it's safer to use a hash, and that's why we're going to use a hash. Um, I guess my example would be like, I don't, if I wanted to know uh, for sure someone knew the recipe to say Coca-Cola, which is a deeply guarded secret, I don't need to know the recipe for Coca-Cola. They could simply just make me a bottle of Coke. I could taste it and be like, yeah, that's definitely Coca-Cola. Um, so uh, le less risk there. If we don't need to know that information, we just need to verify it. We can just use a hash. Um, anyway, let's go back to our code. So we're going to take our statement. It's going to select hash, which is a field from the bcrypt table where username is equal to the variable, uh, argument that we're passing in. Uh, we're going to use db.query, which remember, or query row, I'm sorry, which just returns a row. So it's not going to keep, it's going to turn one row and then it's going to close. So we don't have to, it's not like when we return rows where we have to use, you know, defer rows.close to free up those resources. Anyway, so it's taken this statement that we have here and notice that we have just one question mark, which makes sense because we're just passing in one argument. Um, so you're going to have as many arguments passed in as you have question marks. And it's going to and it's going to go ahead and search, you know, that table to see if it has a username by, you know, whatever we pass in. Uh, we're going to see if we have an error. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and scan that row, and we're just going to go ahead and save that hash into the memory address of our hash variable. So, and we're going to go ahead and print that um, down there. And then if, if error is not equal to nil, so if we had a problem scanning, um, if error is not equal to nil, um, Obviously, this part we're just pr printing it for our tutorial sake. We don't really want to log this stuff, but anyway, in production. But anyway, error selecting hash and DB by username, and so we're just going to execute our login template again. We're going to send them back there and say, "Hey, check username and password." So that was that message you saw at the bottom the second time when I purposely put in the wrong password. This is what I was getting. But um, if it was equal to nil, this is not going to run. We're just going to continue in our code. And remember, we have to have this return. Um, so that way, the rest of this function wouldn't execute, you know, because, you know, the password, uh, because we didn't find um, a password for that username. So they probably put in the wrong username. Um, check in username and password. You know, we could say, hey, check username, but uh, really don't want to give the hackers any more tips than they already have. If they can verify, use this to figure out what are actual usernames, you know, it can just makes it a little bit easier for them. So uh, we're going to keep this message just a little more vague. So here we're going to go ahead and compare the hash and the password. So this is the hash that we pulled from our database. We're going to go ahead and compare it to our password. So uh, remember when we were in the previous video when we were registering, we went ahead and took the password, ran it through our hash function, created our hash. And so we're just checking to see if it's, you know, we get the same hash out the other end. Um, I'm gonna say in review, you know, looking at those hashes that we have saved in our database, you know, we have these different uh, dollar signs. So there's different sections here. Uh, we have our algorithm that we're using, the cost. Um, that's what you increase whenever the as hardware progresses, you want to increase the cost. Then we have our salt in our hash. So in review, uh, we want to make sure we have a salt on there. Um, if I go back to our database, users are very uh, predictable. So uh, for instance, I purposely used a 
really bad uh, predictive password. I capital P, you know, password one two three four question mark. Now I use the same thing for two of these, and if you notice that these hashes don't look anything the same, and that's because when we create it, we put a salt on the front. And by putting a random salt, which is just a random sequence of characters on the front, we get a completely different output on these. So you wouldn't even have guessed that these two users have the same password. And, it, and by also having a random set of these characters on the front, it makes it so the hacker would have to create a brand new... Yeah, they couldn't just create a random table, uh, rainbow table for it because it, this is completely changes the output. Uh, anyway, back to the code. Okay, so we're going to see if the hash from our password, you know, and our other our hash that we'd save in our database, if these are the same. So if it was successful, we're going to return nil. So if these were the same hashes, um, it's going to return nil. And for now, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, pass in our writer and, and to the browser just right you have successfully logged in. We'll flesh this out a little bit further down the line. We're going to hit return so the rest of it doesn't uh, the rest of it doesn't run. So again, if the hash and the hash that we'd saved in our database and the hash from our password are the same, you know, that's going to return nil. If not, then we're going to run the rest of this. Again, this would be logged in production, but uh, it would just say incorrect password. And we're just going to go ahead and again you know, the password wasn't correct, so we're going to say, hey, we're going to execute our temple again, or log into HTML file, and we're going to, again, tell them to check the username and password. So, just kind of looking through this again. Uh, we had already, uh, oh, I guess when I started, I already had ran the login and rendered that page. So when we hit the submit button, we ran the login auth handler. Um, username was Justin, password one, two, three, four, question mark. And again, here was our, you know, our hash. Oh, I'm sorry, there was the login handler and login auth handler, sorry. Okay, and that one was uh, successful and it had printed the screen like, hey, you've been logged in. Um, the second time we ran it, we ran the login handler which was just displaying our template or uh, our form. And then we checked to, you know, authenticate, make sure everything was correct. If the password and username was correct, username was Justin, password was wrong. And notice that we got a different, obviously a different, I'm sorry, it gets the same hash from the uh, database. Uh, maybe I should have printed off what hash we got from hash and the password, but Anyway, we're just keeping it simple. Obviously, this wasn't the same, so it was an incorrect password. Now, in a, one of the next videos, uh, probably the next one, we're going to go ahead and look at staying logged in by using sessions. So let's go ahead and just log back in again. So here we're logged in. Uh, we sent a request. It checked uh, for authentication if you know we were who we say we were via the password. Um, so it sent this response, you know, knowing that hey, we had successfully logged in. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at staying logged in because if I go to any other page right now, it's not going to know you know on that next request you know unless I send the username and password again you know, it wouldn't have a way of telling like, hey, this is still me. Because it, you know, it handles my request and it closes that connection instantly. So um, to keep that, to maintain state, we're going to have to do something else. Um, so that way you wouldn't have to continue to log in anytime you wanted to get uh, information uh, specific to you um, that needs to be secure. Um, anyway, uh, if you like the video, um, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, please post them down in, the, uh, down in the comments and we'll answer those for you. All right, we'll see you in the next one.